Welcome my viewers, please remember to subscribe because you will enjoy my videos. Like and be part of the interesting conversations by simply sharing your views on the videos I share with you guys. So today we delve into the intriguing world of Super Bowl commercials where creativity meets controversy. So join me as we explore the recent Jesus themed commercial that aired during the big game. I mean Jesus with a small letter J because I just find this blasphemous because Jesus never just washed anybody's feet but his disciples. But this commercial feature an unexpected and symbolic act. Now, this art showcasing the washing of feet has sparked heated debates with some praising its boldness and others condemning it as blasphemy. So let's unravel the layers of this advertising storm and examine the diverse reactions it has steered. So stay tuned for a thought-provoking journey through the intersection of marketing, religion, and public perception. I will be right back for now. Check out these videos and when I get back, we talk more about this commercial. It's funny how the ones that don't know him speak the loudest about him. If you're in your feelings and in your emotions and in your flesh, this commercial would be very cute. You actually would be moved by this commercial. But in fact, if you know Jesus for yourself, if you have the Holy Spirit, you would know that this commercial is deceptive. Let's just be very clear. Jesus didn't wash everybody's feet. He washed his disciples' feet. Those that count the cost, pick up their cross and follow him. And the he gets all of us part let me let me be very very this this is how deceptive it is jesus gets you absolutely but he will not nor does he ever accept you doing what you want to do remember he is the way the truth and the life no man gets to god except through him jesus said i don't come to bring peace to the world but a word i pray that if you don't see the wrong in this commercial that you pray to god and ask him for an increase of spiritual discernment because remember jesus said that many would come in his name Sure, this commercial shares his name, but it ain't him. It's half truth, not the whole truth. And half the truth is a lie. This is deception. So the day after the Super Bowl and my For You page is full of righteous Christians telling other Christians how lukewarm they are for supporting the Jesus commercial that was at the Super Bowl because they were washing people's feet. And I'm on no one's side i'm actually on the side of just kind of just being tired of christians against christians and one calling the other lukewarm and i used to be that guy i used to be the super righteous guy and would point out things and be like that is not right but when does that ever work when does that ever work in in the ministry that i've been in i have not saved one soul being aggressive like that but i've i mean i don't save souls god does but i mean like the way you come at it, bro, it does not work anymore, you know? Like, yeah, I'm on no one's side, but it's just, it's annoying, you know? Hey, are you an ex-Christian who's currently dealing with a little religious trauma and maybe a sprinkling of PTSD? Then you were probably triggered by the Jesus Gets Us commercial at the Super Bowl. Me too. Performative spirituality does that to me. It's seeing them pretend that they care about bodies when we both know they only care about souls. It's our parent beating us before we head for church in the morning, but then, you know, plastering on a big old smile the moment we pull into the church parking lot. It's pro-life bumper stickers stuck on the back side of 15 passenger vans while leather straps hang on the walls of the boiler room at church. It's church discipline for morality, but child essay is handled in secret when it's handled at all. It's the Super Bowl commercial equivalent of turning down the lights and starting the soft music right before passing the plate. It's spiritual gaslighting, spiritual manipulation, spiritual bullshit. Watching Christians spend $12 million to performatively wash dirty feet instead of feed hungry bellies should make us sick. Being triggered is the right response. It shows you're healthy. An underground religious organization spent millions of dollars on a Super Bowl commercial as a part of a larger PR campaign to change the public perception of Christians. We're all just minding our own business, watching Taylor Swift's boyfriend try to win the big game, and suddenly we're watching a commercial about people cleaning other people's feet. The Servant Foundation, or the Signatory, is responsible for the He Gets Us campaign. 
The multi-year campaign has ties to Hobby Lobby as the CEO founder, David Green, has donated upwards of $100 million to the organization. Because far-right conservative evangelicals realize that they have a real image problem in Jesus nowadays. So they're like, cool, we're going to take what the like actual Jesus did, which was uh, be loving and kind to all human beings, and we're just going to push that in our campaign. And we're going to make you forget about all the bad things we're doing in the name of religion. Jesus loved thy neighbor. Can't we be the same? So of course, people watching it are like, oh, how refreshing, what a cool take. Finally, religion that gets it. Y'all, even my husband walked in and was like, well, I just saw this commercial, that was really well done. And I was like, yeah, it's a PR move to change public perception about Christians. <laughs> Remember that Hobby Lobby went to the Supreme Court so they wouldn't have to pay for contraceptives for their employees under the insurance plan and made a big fuss over bathrooms and gender. Over the next three years, they plan to spend a billion dollars on this campaign reshaping public perception of Christians. A billion dollars. Do you know how many people that could feed? How many people that could house? These people are anti lg They're anti-autonomy for women. They're anti all the things that Jesus would have supported. But they know if they hire a clever PR consultant and they wrap it up in a really pretty commercial that they play during the Super Bowl, that maybe, maybe they can bring people over to their side. But instead, it's really giving this. And quite frankly, if churches can afford Super Bowl commercials, why are we not taxing them? Anyone? No? Okay. These are the same people who spent 30 plus years trying to get conservative Supreme Court justices on the bench. They are mega wealthy and they have tremendous influence and they will do whatever it takes to return this country to a more traditional way, a conservative way of living. Be warned. The He Gets Us multi-million dollar Super Bowl commercials for Jesus were back for another run. One of the commercials they did was a foot washing commercial where people from conflicting social locations engage each other in the Christian ritual of washing feet. They had a white man washing an indigenous man's feet, white women washing the feet of refugees and teen mothers, a police officer washing a black man's feet, and a priest washing an ostensibly feet. This is your reminder that the hundreds of millions of dollars financing this He Gets Us campaign are tied to a conservative nonprofit in Kansas. This is the same organization that invests tens of millions of dollars into organizations like the Alliance Defending Freedom. The Alliance Defending Freedom is listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center as an anti-hate group, and the ADF is also directly involved in the building of Project 2025. They're one of the very first names listed on the advisory board. Y'all, these are people that actively want to put LGBTQ plus folks in prisons for existing. Yet these are the people funding a Jesus Didn't Teach Hate campaign of inclusivity. And of course, another major funder is David Green, the conservative Christian CEO of Hobby Lobby. So I think you'll see us, our family, with a lot of other families coming on a program. And you're going to see it. You're going to see it. The Super Bowl, he gets us. So we're wanting to say, we being a lot of different people, that he gets us. He understands all of us. He hates who he loves who we hate. And so I think we have to let the public know and, and, and create a movement, really. This is the man who went to the Supreme Court to fight for the right to not give his employees contraceptive coverage. And they won that case in a 5-4 decision. So somehow or another today we're seen as the haters. And yet we have the greatest story in the world about Christ who for us while we're yet sinners. So we're not the haters. We're the one that's got the best and the greatest love story in the world. I this is the man who funded several Project 2025 organizations with his amassed wealth. Hundreds of millions of dollars are supposed to go into this campaign over the next few years. At this present moment in our lives with all that we face. And there is a direct correlation between the rapid decline in religious engagement, especially among young people, and a conservative inclusivity campaign that portrays Jesus as a refugee, as relatable to the common people. They realize that there's a problem in religious engagement and they're trying to fix it. Because religion is used for social control. But it's like Brother Solomon said, if your religious organization has the money to buy Super Bowl ads, when people can't afford rent or groceries, he might get us, but you don't get him. Now, in this commercial, the portrayal of washing feet, just like we have seen, a gesture often associated with religious symbolism has ignited firestorm of opinions. Advocates argue that the art encourages humility and compassion, drawing parallels to the biblical act of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. On the flip side, critics perceive it as a controversial blend of sacred imagery and commercial messaging, viewing it as disrespectful or even blasphemous. Now, as we navigate through these perspectives, it's crucial to examine the intentions 
reasons behind the commercial and how it resonates with different audiences. Beyond the religious implications, the ad raises questions about the fine line between creative expression and potential insensitivity. How does the advertising industry balance pushing boundaries with respecting deeply held beliefs? Are there limits to using religious symbolism in commercial spaces, especially during events as widely viewed as the Super Bowl? So join me as we explore these intricate aspects, analyzing the broader implications of this commercial within the larger conversation about the intersection of faith, media, and consumer culture. Now, fellow Christians, Jesus didn't wash everyone's feet. Now, if you're easily offended, you're probably not going to like this message. But believe me when I tell you this because the world needs to be hit with some truth. And of course, it's perfect timing that they put it out during the Super Bowl, right? But let's water down the name of Jesus. Let's water down who he is and what he did on this earth for us. Whoever made this commercial definitely doesn't read their Bible. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. People are making their own Jesus. They're making Jesus to be whatever they want him to be. Now, this all accepting non-judgmental, give love and accept everybody? Like what? Now, this is going to sting. Jesus doesn't accept everyone into his kingdom. If you're not choosing his way and you're choosing to do what you want to do, he's not going to accept you. Now, telling the truth to people is somehow being hateful. Interesting how that's changed, isn't it? This is a setup for all Christians. Christians that are unequivocally and ashamed to speak the name of Jesus. I'm not afraid to face the lies. I'm not afraid to combat the lies. The world is watering down the message of Jesus and we have to go into the enemy's camp and take it back. It is not hateful to tell someone what they're doing is wrong. Jesus did wash the feet of people, but he didn't wash the feet of people who weren't going after him. Now, many people have said that this organization is about rebranding Jesus and they do say at the end that Jesus doesn't teach hate. So this is supposed to be about humility, I guess, leaning into throwing an image of Jesus washing feet in an act of humility. So if it's supposed to rebrand Christianity, did it work? Well, it did spark a lot of controversy. So let's talk about the controversy before we talk about if this worked. Many Christians called that blasphemous and while the message was Jesus does not teach hate, many people did take to Twitter to share some hate. Now, many people argued that this was somewhat hollow because even if you see images of somebody who is cute having his feet washed by a minister and, and their side of the organization says that people of the HS community are invited to explore the story of Jesus. It's funded in part by the CEO of Hobby Lobby who has famously been against women's health coverage, gender neutral bathrooms, not to mention the commercial placement itself cost $18 million and the initiative is more than $100 and that can feed a lot of people. But all that aside, does this commercial work? Does it demonstrate or invite people to explore Christianity? You have to share your comments in the comment section down below and let's hear what you have to say about this commercial. Now, interpreting whether the commercial was biblically accurate or right is subjective and depends on individual perspectives. Some have argued that it aligns with the biblical theme of humility and service, reflecting the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Others have contend that using religious symbolism in a commercial context is inappropriate. Ultimately, opinions on the commercial's biblical appropriateness will vary based on one's interpretation of religious teachings and personal beliefs. But certainly, the impact of such a commercial extends to both Christians and non-Christians. For Christians, reactions may vary with some appreciating the attempt to convey humility and service, while others might find it controversial or feel that it trivializes sacred symbolism. Non-Christians may also be affected as the commercial touches on broad the themes of respect for religious beliefs and the use of religious imagery in advertising. It sparks conversations about the boundaries of creative expression in commercial spaces and how companies navigate potentially sensitive topics to reach diverse audience. In essence, the impact is multifaceted, influencing perceptions and discussions within both religious and non-religious communities. But what do you, my viewers, have to say about this video? Share your comments in the comment section down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.